Today on Better Book Clubs, what is creative nonfiction? The term creative nonfiction has been around for a while, but a lot of people still aren't familiar with what it really means. So today I want to talk about what creative nonfiction is and why your book club might want to read it. The term creative nonfiction might seem like an oxymoron at first. How could something be both nonfiction and creative? We often use that term creative writing to talk about fiction or poetry, where the author is creating a world or creating ideas or bringing out their imaginative ideas into their writing. But nonfiction is nonfiction. It has to be true. And so when we talk about creative nonfiction, we're talking about nonfiction, a true story, or maybe even a piece of journalism, but a true story that's told more creatively. That doesn't mean that it's untrue at all. In fact, the intent of creative nonfiction is that it is completely factual, but it's not told in that textbook writing style that we've often come to associate with nonfiction writing. Instead, a writer of creative nonfiction is going to use a lot of the literary tools that a creative writer uses. There's an entire literary journal devoted to creative nonfiction. It's called Creative Nonfiction, and its tagline helps to explain the term. It says, true stories, well told. And I think that's a great way to think about cre what creative nonfiction is. Not everybody loves the term creative nonfiction. Some people prefer to call it narrative nonfiction. In other words, nonfiction that tells a story or a narrative. Originally, it was actually uh, referred to often as new journalism. And um, that term was applied to books like Norman Mailer's Armies of the Night, for example, or Truman Capote's famous book, In Cold Blood. But over time, the term evolved into more commonly uh, being called creative nonfiction, for better or for worse. To give you a few examples of some more recent books that fall into the category of creative nonfiction, you could think about memoir, for example. So Cheryl Strayed's Wild or Tara Westover's Educated. Those are both great examples of memoir, but they're being told in a more creative storytelling sort of way, more like literary fiction. There's also the category of journalism. So somebody's not telling their own story, but they're reporting on something that happened to someone else. So examples of creative nonfiction that are more journalistic might be books like Isabel Wilkerson's The Warmth of Other Suns, or Rebecca Skloot's book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Lee Gutkin, who's the founder of the journal Creative Nonfiction, puts it this way. He says, each issue demonstrates the depth and versatility of narrative nonfiction and proves that smart, engaging narratives can make any subject fascinating and meaningful. So again, that idea that we don't have to use those old, more straightforward reporting type forms of nonfiction, we can actually tell a nonfiction story in a more interesting, engaging, creative way. So in this journal, Creative Nonfiction, you'll find writers talking both about the challenges of writing in this genre, but also using the genre itself. So just to give you some examples from a recent table of contents, there's a piece by the writer Sherry Flick called Getting Outside Ourselves, How Looking Up From the Screen and Going for a Walk May Save Us All. There's a piece by Marilyn Robinson called This Essentially Meaningless Conflict, which explains how silly it would be to imagine science, real science anyway, and religion are at odds. And then there are also um, pieces about how to write uh, creative nonfiction. So for example, there's a piece here in the uh, category of writers at work called The Fine Line Between Being Alone and Being Lonely. And a couple of different writers take on that question. In another issue, there's a piece about um, writers at work called No Guts, No Glory. Vulnerability is the key to connecting with an audience, but it's easier said than done. One of many issues that arise for writers of creative nonfiction. 
In any case, don't let the term creative nonfiction get in your way. I thought that it might be interesting for you to hear a little bit more about what it is because it crops up sometimes when people are talking about writing. But in terms of looking for nonfiction that you'd enjoy, don't worry about whether it can be technically categorized as creative nonfiction or narrative nonfiction. Just pick up a nonfiction book and see if it looks right for you. One great place to look for some examples of short creative nonfiction is the annual collection, The Best American Essays, in which the editors pull together the best nonfiction essays of the year and publish them in a collection together. You'll see on the shelf behind me my collection of The Best American Short Stories, and The Best American Essays have covers that look similar to these. So that's a terrific place to start if you're interested in reading some short pieces of creative nonfiction. I hope you and your book club will think about reading some more nonfiction together if you don't already. I'll be back soon with another episode of Better Book Clubs.